Nityanandam, with the auspicious grace and blessings of our Guru, His Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda Swami, I welcome you to this video. Now, I am here today with Sri Nitya Balanitra Ananda at the Nityandeshwar Hindu Temple, Los Angeles. And um, Balanitra Ananda is a disciple of Swamiji, Paramahamsa Nityananda Swami, and he's um, a member of the Los Angeles Sangha. He owns his own online business. And he's been with Swamiji how many years now? Um, for about six years. Six years. Going on seven. And during that time, Balanathar has had a very rich experience being around Swamiji. He's lived in the Bangalore Adinam for a total of almost one year, right? If you add it all up. Yeah, if you add it up, probably like a year. And you're a graduate of the Inner Awakening program? Yes, graduate Inner Awakening. 21, 23 days. 23 days, yeah. Yes. So, a lot of people are hearing about the Inner Awakening program for the first time, or they're thinking about it, but they somehow think either they're postponing it for later, uh -huh. or maybe they feel there's some obstacle like manifesting the money or the time to go. So before you actually went to the first Inner Awakening, uh -huh. did you have any of these obstacles like or ideas that maybe you can't go or can you relate with? How did you make it happen for yourself? Um, the first time I went, I just decided. Like, my first time I had um, first known about Swamiji was through another disciple, Ma Sarvas Marana. Mm -hmm. And she was teaching uh, the lifeless meditation and uh, had a very powerful experience. And then I came to this temple, and Swamiji was conducting a Kundalini webinar, and after I had a very, very powerful experience, and seeing how everybody else had a powerful experience, I was like, I really have to go see him. Mm -hmm. Then I signed up. That's it. I just okay. decided. I just decided, and I went. Did you have the money right away? Yeah, that one, that inner awakening, I had money right away. So okay. that, it was a breeze. Like I just, just once you decided, nothing. Yeah, there was no real obstacles. Just actually, you know, it's funny because. Uh, I remember signing up for Inner Awakening, but I put it off. And there's so many, uh, so many things like I was also was listening to the universe. Like at the time, I didn't follow any guru. Right. But there were things that bad things that were happening it was pointing me to go see Swami. Right. And then when I went to see Swami, all right, all right, this is why all this was happening. Oh, so okay. I was like, all right, I'm, I gotta be with Swami. So then afterwards. Spent 21 days with them in Vidity. That's my first inner awakening. Mm -hmm. 2011, uh, November to December. And yeah, it was my very first beautiful experience with Swami. It was like swimming in the ocean of bliss, I would say. <laughs> like, literally, it, it, it felt like I was swimming in it. Like, it was just this energy that was radiating. Like, some wow. people. They're more um, sensitive right. to it, and I guess I was one of the fortunate ones that just like just would feel his energy. Like, oh, you guys feel that? Yeah. He's like, what are you talking about? Right. But like, well, I can't believe you feel it. It's like yeah. how fishes are in the water. They don't feel they're in the water. They're mm -hmm. just in the water. Like yeah. us, we're in the like ocean of cosmic energy. Some of us can feel it. Some of us don't realize it. But ultimately. It's always there, and Swamiji is radiating that high frequency. That was like one of the uh, things that made me like, wow, Swamiji is somebody else. He's not like a regular human. teacher, guru, guru nothing yeah, like that. nothing like that. Yeah, and for those of you who are maybe hearing about Kundalini awakening or Third Eye awakening for the first time, um, or especially Kundalini awakening, sometimes people don't feel anything. But once you've been initiated, um, that actual expression of maybe the levitation or the movement of the Kundalini doesn't reflect in everyone. But Swamiji says, it, once it's awakened, it, it has happened. It's not like everyone has to feel something. That There's no measure. The measure is how you run your life afterwards. The energy and resource and intelligence available to you after your kundalini is awakened is what 
is the main purpose of the whole thing. The Kundalini um, energy is your dormant potential energy, actually. It's just sitting there not being awakened until we have initiation from a master and avatar like Swamiji. Yeah, it's a, it's a luxury. When your Kundalini is awakened, whatever you want, all you have to do, see, Swamiji has initiated me and all the disciples into Kundalini awakening. See, whatever you want, all you have to do is decide for it, awaken the Kundalini, and it happens. That's all. And I, mean, I have nothing else to say. That's that yeah. simple. <laughs> yeah. No, Swamiji, that's the whole thing. Swamiji makes it so easy for us. Like, what you hear of yogis and yoga practitioners, like, working on their practice for 20, 30 years, reading about Kundalini awakening, hearing about it, and maybe there's some glimpse but not like this. You have people just walk in day one, they have the experience. Are they even, many people have the experience via just two-way video connection. So, so okay, after that first IA, now you run your own business. Is that something you would have seen yourself doing maybe five years ago, three years ago? Like, how? what changed um, to make that happen? How did you make that happen? Because you're still pretty young, you know, it's not. Yeah. Um, I guess for me, like I just before Swamiji, I was working dead end jobs. But deep down inside, I knew that was not where I was supposed to be. So, you know, after my first inner awakening, I was still, I was still searching for things to do, and then I went to go see Swamiji again in 2013, and I spent um, about six months with him. And then I asked for blessings for a mentor to, for business, for making money. And I think within about a month, I met up with somebody I really looked up to and he taught me a lot of things. And within six months, uh, I was able to manifest the, the business, wow. the money, the empire, it was like my own empire. And I'm still building up my own empire, thanks to uh, Swamiji. And, I remember my first inner awakening, he said, I grant you, like, with wealth. And, like, he just totally showers, like, just making uh, things happen in my life that needs uh, finance. It's not a, not a struggle at all. Wow. And I get to do it all in the comforts of my own home. I don't have to go to an <laughs> office job or travel to, like, with a truck or anything like that. It's just... You see at home, just making money. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you get to come to the temple. Yeah, I get to yeah. come to the temple. Do the seva, in, yeah. Do the seva, be in the energy space, which is uh, really, I guess you could say revitalizing, a recharge. Mm -hmm. so. Wonderful. So you may have noticed Balanitra actually has a Trinita Tilak like this, which is Swamiji, um, once inner awakening participants, Adinavasis, who have uh, demonstrated their ability to manifest powers. And there's certain um, tests, so to speak. It's not really a test. They just go into the space of oneness. And when they're consistent with it, they get the blessing of the Trinita Tilak. So Balanetra is one of our uh, inner awakening graduates who actually is manifesting powers after you know spending so much time around Swamiji, having the initiations, and going through the completion process to you know, get rid of any blocks that may be preventing the manifestation from happening. He is now, um, he's able to body scan. Yeah, body scan. Um, some of the shaktis that has, uh, Swamiji has expressed through this body um, is uh, third eye reading, uh, body scanning, remote viewing, uh, moving matter, which is, you probably have seen it, uh, which is like moving the coconuts. That's like the initial stage. And uh, quite recently was materialization, which was a huge. Are you materialized? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, well, I didn't tell you. That. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, Swami materialized. Through you. Yeah. When? Shakti Pada. No, here or when you were in no, Nadia? No, I was in Nadia. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we had a process. Uh, it was like an hour and a half initiation. Wow. Yeah. What, what materialized? Um, it was like the beginning stages of uh, Diamond. A diamond, wow. Yeah. I have it at home. I almost lost it twice. So, <laughs> so I was like, I'm not 
gonna take it out. I'm just gonna leave it until I figure out. Got it. So that's another. There's so much happening in the Adinam, like so materialization. Actually, Swamiji's initiated disciples for several years into this, and there's been scientific studies on uh, um, the disciples who are materializing. There's a lot more science to be done. Swamiji believes very strongly. There's we have no need to justify our Hindu sciences. Um, already, it's proven. It's been there for thousands of years. Swamiji is just reviving it, but he believes strongly in connecting the world of science to uh, understand and help them understand all these amazing feats that already Hinduism is already aware of. And so that people understand that Hinduism is capable of offering this to the world and is, is ready to share it with the world. So, so materialization is one of those things. So we have um, Adi Navasis, inner awakening graduates who are just are devotees, you don't even have to be an inner waking graduate or people materialize kumkum, vibhuti, honey, um, yananjana, yeah. and then oh, precious stones. Yeah. So it's a basically power manifestation is happening in a very rapid way in the past year. And a lot of things are settling. Soon this will be um, made available in a massive way. But it's beyond one or two people. Balanitra was with a group of probably, you went to Sadashivam, right? Yeah, Sadashivam. Which was a thousand people. I think it was 3,000. Okay, I don't, because I don't it was about at least 1,000 participants, oh, yeah, maybe at least, volunteers. At least 1, yeah. for sure. And then, so, and everyone, almost, I think 80 or 90% were manifesting something. Yes. So, the purpose of telling you these numbers is to so that you understand that it's not few people, it's not any particular type of um, person is people who are just ready to receive the initiation from Swamiji and be integrated to whatever Swamiji has for them as a disciple or a devotee. So, is there anything else you wanted to share, you know, with the audience? Um, well, I guess, I guess one of the like final words. Uh, let's wait for this. We're outside a temple right now. Yeah. Things happen. So. Oh. It's annoying. Okay, it's annoying. Go ahead, go. So, um, one of the final things I want to share is whatever you want to happen in your life, whatever you want to manifest, really. Yeah. Nothing is stopping you other than you deciding for it. Many times we want something, but we see an obstacle. Uh, we don't have the money for it. We don't have the time for it. We don't have a relationship. Like our, our spouse is not allowing us to do this or that. Or my family is stopping me. And if you just analyze your life, scan your life, you can see that you have all of these excuses for things that you, other things you want to manifest in life. Matter of fact, like whatever you want in life, you'll see that these obstacles will be the main thing that's blocking you. And the thing is that that is a way of you saying, no, I don't, I don't want this. I don't deserve this. But when you decide, yes, I want this, this, whatever to manifest, to say inner awakening, for example, and then you just go for it. You just decide. I want inner awakening and I'm going to make this happen. Things will happen for you. But if you say, I want inner awakening, but I want to get money first, then you will always run into this obstacle. So you're making the universe do a two step process for you. Why make it a two step process when you can make it a one step process? Just decide what you want. Don't decide to remove the obstacle first and then get what you want. The universe is very powerful to give you what you want, regardless of your perceived obstacles. Yeah, yes, you may have issues with money, you may have issues with time, you may have issues with relationships, but it all boils down to do you want it or not? That's it. So that's the last thing I want to yeah. share. Thank you so much for sharing that. Actually, I think that's the theme that we're hearing in the different interviews is that it comes down to your decision to make it happen and your will persistence because life will 
point you to all your incompletions just out of compassion to show you where you're stuck and gives you the solution. Swamiji gives us the solutions to come out of it. So thank you so much, Balanitra. And thank you, Swamiji. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, hopefully it was enriching. And thank you so much. Nityanam.